Welcome to this video of the Functional Python series. In this video, I want to talk about the streams. The streams are a very powerful data structure. And, um, and the objective of this video is to introduce you to this concept within Python. Um, later in the series, we will see how we can use them to implement beautiful functional programming. But first, we need to understand what they are and their fundamental use. The most important aspect of streams is that they are lazy. That means that they're only executed when required. And uh, in Python, they are known as iterators and also generators. Generators are a special type of iterators. So iterators really encompasses both. But I, I think that the concepts are significantly different and it's, it's good to actually keep them separate. And please do not confuse functional streams, functional streams with Python streams. Uh, they are very, very different. I will continue to use the term streams because that's the functional programming term. And uh, even though within Python, they are known as iterators. Uh, remember the goal of the series is not to be Pythonic, but rather how to effectively do functional programming in Python. So let's get started. And um, if, a variable, let's call, let's call it st is a stream, then by calling next, we consume the next value. What does it mean to consume it? We ask the stream to compute the next value and then return that. Because uh, we consume it, we essentially cannot rewind it. And uh, so once we have called next, that previous value is gone from the point of view of the stream. In reality, many data structures that are streams in Python, they implement a way to rewind, but that's very specific of each one of those. And uh, so let's not worry about that for the time being. If the stream is infinite and, uh, and then we call next too many times, eventually we'll have a stop iteration exception uh, that will be raised. And as we will see in future videos, a map filter and many other functions operate on a streams. And that's what we want to discuss them today. Okay. I think that the simplest example of a stream is a file. When we open a file, the file essentially can operate as a stream. Here's a very simple example. I have a file here called input.txt. It only has three lines. And then the program opens this file, read only, and it simply prints the value returned by next and we do it four times so we know that eventually we'll run out of um, out of out of uh, input and that's what happens so we print the first three lines and eventually we get the stop iteration so relatively straightforward um, another interesting aspect is that generator comprehensions are streams generator comprehensions are the ones that they are created with parentheses rather than brackets if I do this, this is not a generator comprehension. Generator has to be between uh, parentheses. So uh, notice that all I'm doing is iterating over the array one, two, three. We'll see that there are easier ways to do this uh, later. And I'm calling next four times. So of course, the fourth time I will get an exception, exactly the same as in the previous code. <clears throat> we can collect any collection into stream. And uh, so I can have this line of code uh, instead of the generator. So the array one, two, three becomes an iterator and then I can traverse it as before, okay? So um, equivalent code to what we had in the previous slide. Now let's assume I want to create a stream and this is where the power starts to show. And uh, let's assume I have the factorial function. So uh, it can be any function. I'm just using this because it's a typical functional programming example. And let's assume I want to create an infinite stream that starts by, let's call it with i. Then I want to call it with i plus 2 multiplied by the delta. Then the next value I want is i plus 3 delta, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea of this function is that it will take another function the one that we want to stream, and then it will be responsible of generating the stream with the values as I indicated. And, and the magic sauce is this line, the yield. So the yield essentially stops the processing of the stream. And then the next time that we call next, 
the code will continue after the yield. I think that um, if we look at the example, it become clear. So if we call next of, sorry, first we create the stream. So we create the stream with factorial. So we say we want the factorial number and we want the values uh, every two. So one, three, five, seven, etc. And then when I call next of s, what I will have is that we're calling it with f of i, the original value, which is one. This will call factorial, return the value, and stop there. But re returning the value means that I can actually have now the factorial of one. The next time that I call factorial of, uh, fact uh, sorry, the next time that I call next, it will continue in line 20, do another iteration, and it stop at the yield, and so forth. So the output of this will be the corresponding factorial numbers. So that's a way to basically generate a list of factorials in a lazy manner. So I'm only going to generate them the moment that I need them. How do I, uh, I tell Python that I need them? I essentially call next. So um, just to conclude, um, again, this is a very foundational video. Later in, in, in the series, we will see how to use them. But streams are everywhere in Python. And uh, they're usually known as generators and iterators. And, uh, and at, this, at this point, I'm sure that uh, this might look silly because who's going to call, uh, who's going to read a file using next? And, uh, but we will see in the future that um, we can use them very, very effectively, especially when we start covering um, map and filter. Okay. Again, as usual, uh, the code for this video is in GitHub. You can follow uh, this link. It's going to be in the description. And I'll see you in the next.